Okay, just listen to that. That lovely sound. And I'll explain those switches later on because we sure weren't getting that sound out of this Maytag dishwasher earlier today. Now don't get me wrong, we like our Maytag dishwasher. It's a pretty good dishwasher, does a good job of getting things clean and all the mechanicals seem to be working well. But in the time that we've had it, we're now on to our third control panel. This is the control panel right here. It's mounted in the top of the, uh, of the dishwasher door. And if you peel away the sticker on here, you'll see that there's a membrane touch panel underneath. That comes off right there. At first I thought the problem was in the membrane touch panel. And so we ordered new ones and we replaced them and they're about 150 bucks a piece, which is a real ripoff, particularly when you discover that the problem isn't in the membrane touch panel, but it's in this little flat plastic cable that comes up here and connects it together. You can see that for the lack of about 25 cents of water sealing, um, Maytag slash Whirlpool slash Amana slash Kenmore, I believe is one of the brands they make, all those brands have built, uh, built into them, and you see it all over the internet, a flaw where the control panels go. It's not the control panel, it's not the control board, it's this goofy little piece of wire, and it's a type of wire that's almost impossible to solder to. So because I'd held on to the um, old, uh, uh, old control boards, control panels, I was able to actually do a little bit of reverse engineering and see how I might uh, put this together and fix it up. And the control, uh, the push buttons are actually working really well. They're a pretty neat design. They're actually layered together here and you can break it down into layers. You can pop it open. You can come into this end and you can cut up a little flap right on here. Just cut this flap away so that you can get in and you can see the touch, uh, the pins right here that the busted up cable would connect to. So if I pull that out right there, you can see where it used to connect. And you can use your multimeter to trace the leads on there and find out which of these pins connects to which of these buttons and uh, how they work together. This is the panel that I did most of my testing on. And you can see that I've numbered the pins, uh, one through 18. Uh, right on there. That turns out to be the same configuration as the numbering on the control board. So by going through there I did a series of tests and just measured resistances between the two of them. When a button's pressed it doesn't always give you a closed connection. Some Quite often it gives you a uh, 10k ohm resistor connection. There's some little surface mount resistors on the on the panel right here and I don't think my macro will come in quite close enough to show it but they have 103 stamped on them so that's your indicator that those are the 10k resistors that we're talking about. So after testing this back and forth and pressing a number of buttons and measuring the resistance I discovered that there is always a connection between pin 6 and pin 12 and that is a 10k ohm connection. So if you put a 10k ohm resistor between pin 6 and pin 12, that uh, emulates the state of the board when absolutely nothing is on. We wanted to be able to access uh, just three of these buttons, and I wasn't concerned about the LED. Obviously, start was a very important one. Start is a connection between pin 12 and 13. It's a normally open connection with a 10k resistor in there. So when the start button is pressed, there is a resistance of 10k ohms between pin 12 and 13. The auto clean button down here at the far end, auto clean is our furthest one here, and you can see that you can cut away and get down and actually get down to the board. Uh, just be careful that when you do it as you peel up, you may damage some of the tracing like we saw right there. Uh, but uh, to get the auto clean to activate, uh, one side of that, the top of that button is connected to pin 10 and the underside of it is connected to pin 5. So down here there will be a 10k connection between pin 5 and pin 10 when auto clean is pressed. 
The pin 5 is also used for the heavy wash button, which is the other button that I wanted to be able to activate. So the heavy wash is the second button in from the end right here. And to activate that, you put a uh, 10K ohm resistor and a momentary switch uh, between pin 5 and pin 9 so that when you uh, press your um, heavy wash button, uh, you see 10K between pin 5 and pin 9. And that's your pinout that comes right down here. Those six connections are the six connections you need to get your dishwasher running. You're not going to have all the fancy LEDs, you're not going to have all the fancy options, but as you heard, that dishwasher will work. So here's the little schematic of the switches that you saw hanging off the front of the dishwasher. I'm going to do them up a little bit nicer later on, but this goes right down to the uh, control board inside the front panel of the dishwasher. And I had to remove the flat panel connector from, that, uh, from the control board. Removing that little connector was a bit of a pain because you have to desolder 18 pins all spaced far apart and buried underneath a conformal coating. So you have to scrape away the conformal coating and then I actually destroyed the connector in the process and I directly wired uh, the uh, new ribbon cable that I have into there using this circuit diagram. So you'll see at the bottom, if you really want the normal wash button to work, uh, you connect pin 9 and 12, but you don't need a resistor on that. That seems to be a 0K hookup. Okay, so if it works for you, that's great. If it doesn't work, uh, just remember you got the advice from a guy on the internet who may or may not know what he's talking about. Uh, so good luck, and uh, next time you're out shopping for some appliances, uh, don't buy Maytag. As much as I hate to say it, uh, we thought we were getting good uh, North American made quality. And uh, anyways, it's a wonderful machine, except for somebody cheaped out on 25 cents of waterproofing and uh, things seem to be falling apart. And don't even get me started about our Maytag dishwasher. Thank God we had an extended warranty on that thing. <laughs>